And that's the show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Legends of Raspia! <laughs> Mm -hmm. The podcast wherein we explore the fantastical world of Raspia and play games we create with our talented friends and read scripts off of our MacBook because we don't yet have our introduction memorized. <clears throat> the twist is we don't tell our guests how to play these, uh, these, these games beforehand. I am Han Blackheart, the GM you adore to a blah, 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 blah. And this is why we edit. And uh, with me, as always, is Rick Tahi. How we doing, Rico? I'm doing swell, thank Good. you. Good. So, on this show, Rico and myself and our honored guests will demonstrate to you listeners how simple our games are to pick up. Then inevitably, you'll fall in love with us, buy our games like this one, and make me less poor than I quite genuinely am. So, usually we'll have a guest, and at this point we'll be introducing them. However, we're just going to start off our story today with old-fashioned Rico and I. Good old-fashioned one-on-one. -on -one. If you're curious about our games, check out Legends of Raspia. Check out BardFox.com. Google us, like our videos, subscribe to our stuff. And with that, we begin. <laughs> What's great is in the score, that's going to make total sense. Those are musical cues. So for people who are new to the podcast or new to board games or gaming itself, worry not. Oh, Legends of Arespia. It's a role-playing game. That just means that I, the GM, will weave a world for you guys wherein our characters live. Then they do stuff in the story and roll dice to see if those things happen. All you need to know are these three rules, and this includes our guests-to-be rule number one as the GM. I cannot tell the players no. I'll let that sink in for a moment. Uh, rule number two, do whatever you want, but remember, as I said, that the system is balanced to handle the chaotic nature of the human brain and your character is mortal. Looking at you, Tahi. Looking at you. So, rule number three, always have a third rule. And with that, we begin our story, Ope. Legends of Raspia commences. I don't even think I want to score that part. I'm just going to leave that as is. So, Rico Tahi will be playing a character known as Fobear Dongodare. It's Dongodare. That's not, that is indeed what I said, but I appreciate your enthusiasm for correction. Um, you are a rat person. These uh, people called Mosbirians. They have a horrendous past of being victimized by this uh, the colonistic empire that has sort of grown literally over top of them. Um, for this reason, being Mosbirians, it was sort of hard to find a living in this nation of Toria. And so Fobear's grandparents moved as far away from Torian control that still was relatively safe. Which brings us out to Kaltari. He's up. Out in the very middle of what is known as the Arid Knox the desert that is 1,200 miles just to get to Kaltari. Kind of think Old West meets like a King Arthur, you know, a kind of a little bit of a Game of Thrones vibe just thrown in there. A little bit of Red Wall with the animals. Uh, anyway, and um, so. Anyone else? Nothing. Okay. Oh. So, your grandparents threw down with a couple of other wayward families that made the trek through the arid knots and bought the biggest tavern in Kaltaria. They own a bar, and it's called the Just a Mirage. LOL, I'm sure there's a reason for that. Faubert himself. Faubert, why don't you say hello? Hello, this is Faubert Dongoder. Um, I'm a strapping young lad of uh, 18 lotions old. I've, uh, I weigh approximately 30 libs and I'm uh, 1.2 stretch tall. I'll tell you that much. Um, An important distinction. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, I'm quite, um, uh, how do you say, agilitous. Um, I can, uh, I can, I can jump around, hop around as I so please, and um, um, and I also have a bit of a knack for um, for doing dishes. Well, more than a knack, this man has a passion for dishes. He is humble, Faux Bear Dongo Dare. And um, he, in fact, has washed dishes at the Just a Mirage since he was 10 revs old. He spent that time getting to know the local cactus farmers and the rare passing wagons that come through. Um, that being said, his shift 
has just ended. And so he is sitting at the bar in the Justin Mirage. And you know that strange point in a bar where it seems like it's employees only, like it's right there around the corner and like you got your like bar door and it's like, it says employees only, I, I wrote it on there. To be fair, it was on a napkin, but they left it there for a long time. Yes, and then we stabbed the napkin with a knife into the bar itself. One of several knives, I tell you. As he sits there, old Fober Dongo Dare, he is sitting next to what I would only describe and probably he would describe as his rival, an old gadly bone man. And we begin our game, as we always do, with a perception roll on behalf of Fober Dongo Dare. All righty, so I'm gonna take my trusty D20, my, my die, that goes all the way up from one to 20. Give it a roll. I don't have any perception. I'm not a particularly perceptive folk at this point. So I just rolled a 13. Oh, with that being said, you have just gotten off of work. You are of legal age, Mr. Fo oh, excuse me. You know, what is your uh, described pronoun? Because we here at Legends of Raspia have a place for that atop the sheet. It is indeed he, him. I am uh, a, a, a male Mosperian. We'll call it a lucky guess. Anyway, you are sitting next to Gadley, who is staring at you with contempt in his eyes. You are waiting for your drink, having just ordered. Uh, what, what drink was that, Fobert on the It's a bit of rosa. Nothing a like rosa. a... Uh, right, nothing like a bit of, um, you know, grape-based fermented beverage after a long shift. Nor is there anything like a very specific description of a fantastical beverage. I like that. Take a bit. Ooh. Bits are like currency. It's how they buy stuff to be scarier or not scarier. So as you sit there and you are being glared at by Gadley Bo Malley, you realize that um, he is drinking his water and has been sitting there with an empty glass. He sort of sits there staring at you like this. Oh, you've been drinking out of that glass. So that's the one I specifically didn't wash and I in fact spit in previously to you coming here. We both know that I have spent a lifetime gaining an immunity to Dongo Dare spit. Thank you. Yes, well, I'm going to be mixing it up soon. I've got all sorts of various saliva samples that I'll be putting in your glass. The self-described bartender, everybody. Um, so as you are sitting in your tavern and the piano player continues to jangle on, old Wami Tates is over there just playing his tunes. He tends to feel out the vibe of the room when they often, uh, what, you know, on the, on the set's end, weekend, people tend to get a little more rowdy. And when old Wami Tates hears a fight break out, he's got a very specific melody, and it's this right here. It'll become motivic. So, oh, Wami Tates is banging around on the piano. You are surrounded by about half a dozen patrons. It is a mun rote night. And so, you have uh, been fairly slow. Um, that, uh, that being said, you now have an open table wherein you have two actions. Two actions you can perform as you sit at the bar next to your arrival. All right. Um, first, I'd like to um, perceive a little bit. I'd like to perceive a little bit more about Gadley. What uh, what sort of things are he uh, is he wearing? What what sort of demeanor? How can I make fun of him more? Oh, I rolled a nineteen on my die. Oh. Gadley Bone Alley is one rev year older than you are. So he is um, he's been washing dishes there for a little bit longer than you have. However, recently. You have taken over the Fry Road Friday shift. And on that particular night, the dishwashers get tipped out. Mm -hmm. Gadley did not voluntarily give this up, let me tell you. All right, well, then I will, use, I will use my second action to say, oh, Gadley, oh, it's a shame. Shame you missed last Fry Road. Um, oh, the bits were just pouring in, I tell ya. Oh, so, so many tips. You should have seen the tip out. I, just, I had to get a new pair of pants just so I could have more pockets to put the new bits in. Influence roll. 
That's an 18. Oh, where long ago there you were. I'm sorry, yes, called me a what? The T word. You did not? I did. I'd spell it for you if I didn't know that you could spell it, having written it down on my back that one time. Just because it was a cast and I was having people sign it did not mean that you should You know what you did for there, don't go there. It's don't go there. And I, that's what I said! And I don't want to hear about how much we uh, made so many bits. Oh, so many bits. Currency, like I said. I made so many bits on Fry Road. That's just great for you. Oh, look, your drinks are here. Why don't you roll a perception roll? Now that we go to the world's turn and he's used both of his actions. <laughs> now this time I rolled a two. A two on your perception. I see. Well, I don't. bartender <laughs> walks over. And um, you've known her for quite some time. Her name is Dara. It's not spelled how you think it'd be spelled. It's with an H. So, Dara walks over and she comes over and tells you, Well, I'm gonna be honest with you there, uh, faux bear. Gadly Bow Mal is requesting to get your uh, get your shift on Fry Road. So, uh, here's the thing. I don't folk want to deal with this petty dishwashing shite, so I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys deal with it between you. And uh, by the time I bring you back your refill, because I know you could want another one, um, you better have this figured out, because I hate scheduling. I'm not even supposed to be doing this. Oh, you hear that, you twit? Oh, I heard it. In fact, I've been waiting for just this moment. I always thought it would just take this one glass of water, but it's taken several glasses because it took you so long to wash your dishes. To wit, I say, twit, that I challenge you to a wash-off, officially. I accept your wash-off challenge, and I will, in fact, step it up. It's not just this fry rote that we're challenging about. It's every fry rote for the next entire notion. Influence roll is your first action. See how simple this is? It's really just that straightforward. That's a five on my influence. Well, I too rolled poorly, but it's still better than you, Dongo Dare. I tell you what, I accept your challenge to wit. I say that I accept, I accept your challenge. Hmm. We will wait until closing time. Dara! 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 She, like, looks over with a clear, like, I told you not to clap at me. <laughs> kind of look on his out of her face. And he's like, okay, well, I'm sorry I clapped at you. I know that's the rule. Um, but we're doing a wash-off, as is tradition. So as you know, I'm sure I don't have to explain this to you. Leave the dishes for us to handle. Ain't these the dishwashers? Exactly. Leave the dishes for us to handle. And why don't you go collect a crowd? Because there's going to be a wash-off like this place hasn't seen since the last time he and I did a wash-off. Did you hear that? I can't believe it timed out so cra- I did like this and Wami is on it back there. It's almost- Wami's like- always on it. Give him, the- Give the man his credit. It's almost like he has retroactive capabilities. Ope Legends of Raspia is brought to you by Bard Fox. Olor and the game Legends of Raspia is created and produced by Han Blackheart and Rick Tahi. Story, music, and sound effects by Han Blackheart. Video and audio editing by Rick Tahi. This episode starred Rick Tahi as Faux Bear Don't Go Dare. Find him on Instagram, I guess, somewhere. Our game moderator was Han Blackheart. Visual art created by Xanthi Blackheart. Check out Bard Fox's Instagram and bardfox.com for our weekly releases of Raspia music, this show, and much more to come. Thanks for listening, and as always, good luck back there on Earth. <laughs>